uh, in this uh, lecture we will see the t alambert principle is a very short lecture uh, let us say we have an object which i have shown in blue color box and uh, we are applying different forces uh, like i have shown in different color arrows uh, that the total force is equal to m a that is from newtonian mechanics uh, then uh, we will take some fictitious uh, force f equal to minus ma that is just opposite to this so that this object is uh, at rest uh, or uh, slowly moving one so uh, this force which i have shown in red color uh, is just opposite to the real force so this force is called inertial force or uh, fictitious force or t alambert force so uh, <coughs> uh, what is the advantage of this uh, this modifies the newton second law to uh, incorporate uh, constraint you know what is the constraint i have given one separate lecture on constraint it states that uh, the virtual work done by the inertial forces and applied forces for any virtual displacement consistent with the system constraints is zero uh, that is this is applied force f equal to ma uh, then uh, the virtual force is f equal to minus ma for any system if you uh, add both you will get to zero that is the meaning of this one uh, then we will move further i have uh, given separate lecture on uh, constraint Uh, simple pendulum is the one of the best example for the constraint so you have a string of uh, frictionless uh, string of length l uh, which is moving along the angular along the angle theta so it moves along this direction let us say this is along the x direction and the force is acting downwards that is uh, displacement and the force are perpendicular to each other uh so uh, this length is fixed and the movement also uh, restricted it can take a semi circle movement so circular movement with the same length uh, not uh, you cannot change the length or any other uh, parameter so according to newton second law we know the force of ith particle that is f uh, sub i is equal to m sub i a sub i mass into acceleration now we will deal with the constraint and the virtual displacement consider the constraint restrict the motion of the particle as uh, shown in the case of simple pendulum a virtual uh, displacement uh, delta r i is uh, infinite decimal uh, change in the position of ith particle so delta i is a very small change is a very small change uh, infinite decimal really small uh, so the consistent with the constraint at given instant so th there is a constraint in the movement rearranging the newton second law uh, rearranging the terms f i minus m i r sub i uh, double dot this uh, r uh, double dot is the acceleration that is second order derivative with respect to time which is equal to zero this is also uh, one form of uh, newton law mathematically both will say, uh, same uh, then we will see what is the difference Uh, the virtual work uh, done by all forces uh, both applied and inertial during the virtual displacement uh, must uh, sum to zero for a system in equilibrium so i have i have already explained what you mean by the virtual uh, displacement is a very small uh, infinite decimally small displacement so the summation over uh, i Uh, f sub i uh, dot uh, delta r i minus 
summation over i m i r sub i double dot uh, dot delta r i must be equal to zero. The first term is uh, sum up all the uh, uh, applied forces. This is applied force on nth particle and we are summing it up. So naturally this is the total force on all the particle. Similarly, this is inertial force. Second term is inertial. Inertial force of all particle we, because we are uh, making summation. This must for virtual displacement. Uh, yep, that what uh, then is uh, force into distance. So uh, as I said in the case of uh, simple harmonic oscillator, uh, the movement. Uh, that uh, we are having is that uh, displacement is along x direction and uh, applied force is along the downwards. So both are uh, force and displacement are uh, perpendicular to each other, but uh, for that product it must be parallel. So uh, for a constrained force, uh, this displacement is equal to that is force into distance is equal to zero. Uh, so now you can rewrite this summation over i uh, fi minus m i r i double dot uh, dot delta r i is equal to zero because this is third product and the force and the displacements are perpendicular direction. So uh, this can be re uh, rewritten as summation over i f sub i uh, dot delta r i is equal to summation over i m i r i double dot uh, dot delta r i. Uh, now we will compare Newton's second law and T. La, T. Alembert principle. Uh, according to Newton's second law, f equal to m a. Uh, same thing in the T. Alembert form f minus m a equal to 0. Mathematically both look like uh, the same but uh, there is a difference. Here it is for a dynamic system. Uh, so here it is for a static system. That is very important. That is very uh, important difference between the Newton's second law and T. Alembert principle. So this can be written as by all the particles, summation over i, we have just now seen it. Uh, f sub i minus m sub i r sub i double dot uh, dot uh, delta r i must be equal to 0. So uh, this uh, T. Alembert's principle reduces a problem in dynamics to a problem in statics. That is very important point to be noted. Uh, because Unknown forces are more easel, easily determined. In this case, unknown forces is inertial force. Uh, so, unknown forces uh, can be more easily determined on the body in the equilibrium. That is very important. In the equilibrium than on a moving bodies. The force and stress analysis of machine machine components can be usually be simplified by using inertial forces. That is the advantage of uh, T. Alembert uh, principle. Uh, thank you very much for watching my, my videos and supporting me continuously. Thank you very much.